Muscle Cuirass, Anatomical Cuirass, Heroic Cuirass, Greco-Roman Armor. Early Muscle Cuirasses were also called a Bell Cuirass because of the flange at the bottom making it look like a bell. The Bell Cuirass evolved into the Muscle Cuirass, also known as the Anatomical Cuirass or the Heroic Cuirass. The Muscle Cuirass was made of two plates of bronze hammered into shape and pinned together at the sides and shoulders with hinges. These were mainly worn by generals, emperors, and deities. Those in the army were called hoplites. They typically wore a hardened leather version of the muscle cuirass. This was a part of their panoply, a collection of armor and weapons. The bronze muscle cuirasses weighed around 25 pounds. The hardened leather was much lighter and much more inexpensive. Emperors and generals wore highly adorned cuirasses with gold embossing for display and ceremony, while adopting the plain cuirass for combat. Deities such as Ares are also depicted wearing the elaborate cuirasses. The muscle cuirass was often given such detail in the anatomy as to include the nipples and navel. This attention to details was typical of Greek culture and their obsession with the perfect anatomical body. You can find the template for this project at armortemplates.com. This is a creation of David Guyton, who has excellent tutorials and how-tos on creating metal armor, which can also be created in EVA foam, which we will be doing today. This is a little snapshot picture of what the template will look like from David. It is quite extensive and you can just print it. This is what the armor will look like when it is complete. Of course, this is out of metal. I'll be doing this out of EVA foam. So his piece, he has the metal attached with rivets to leather. Uh, this is for greater mobility. The historic pieces were just metal. In ancient Greece and Rome, the materials used would be bronze, leather, hammer, anvil, and various blacksmithing tools. While on my project, I will be using EVA foam, a Dremel, a razor knife, a heat gun, plasti dip, bronze spray paint, Velcro, a sewing machine, and a t-shirt. Must-haves for working with EVA foam will be a heat gun for shaping, plasti dip to prep for painting, a Dremel for shaping, and a razor knife for cutting the foam. I used a half inch EVA foam mat. I also had to downsize the pattern as I was making this for my 10 year old son instead of a full grown man. I pinned the pattern to the mat using sewing pins, uh, traced it and then flipped the pattern over to create the other side of the pattern. Then I used my Dremel to bevel the edges of all of the pieces to make them look more like rounded metal in the shape of muscles. These are all of the pieces, both front and back. Here I have painted them with Plasti Dip so that the bronze spray paint will stick nicely to the EVA foam. Here you see the bronze paint on it and the pieces laid out on top of the t-shirt I will be attaching them to in place of the leather. Once I have them laid out, I traced them with chalk and began attaching the velcro pieces. Once the velcro pieces were attached to the shirt, I then attached the corresponding pieces to the muscles. Here you can see the complete piece on my son. It turned out to be quite a success. There's some pieces that still needed some heat shaping to better form his body, but all in all, he's ready for battle. Thank you for watching this presentation by Candace West.